Okay, this is uh, making biochar um, with the pet method, or the trench method. Um, I've got a trench there that's about a foot and a half, two feet deep. It's been running for a little while. It had a bunch of corn stalks and some lighter stuff, and now I've got some brush that's coming up um, you know, that I'm putting on. Uh, but the advantage of the trench is that you can have fairly long pieces and fairly brush, brushy pieces. And then as they, they turn to charcoal and get brittle, you can break them, break them up and uh, move your brush into the fire. <clears throat> and being in a trench, it's it's um, easy to get close to. The heat isn't radiating out, it's going into the sides and holding its heat in place. Keeping the char going. Keeping the wood charring. And there, I break, go along and I break it up. The brittle stuff. Kind of rake the bigger stuff to the top if it's still got some flame in it. But if it becomes a char and it's just glowing, sooner I can get it buried under other char, the uh, better the, the char is preserved. It's not burning up. It's protected from the oxygen. Now, this is pretty small scale, but if you've got an orchard, you could have a, a long trench and burn up a, a lot of brush. Uh, Turn it into char in a fairly short time uh, with a, a guy feeding it. And then uh, once it's done, what I'm trying is uh, I'll mix in some compost and then just cover it up with dirt and hope that we'll see how it goes over the years um, with earthworms and stuff bringing in dirt between the, the chunks of charcoal and kind of integrating it more. This, we'll do some trial tests too over the top, see, see how things grow over these trenches. Okay, the fire's burning down. I've, I've uh, burned up, uh, stuck in, burned most of my uh, brush that I'm ready to get rid of. Um, there's a couple larger pieces that haven't charred yet, uh, and you can see that how it's glowing. That's bad, that's you're losing char that way. So I've got, um, I'm gonna sprinkle, I've got some uh, nutshells and stuff. Um, and the idea is that uh, it'll burn flame up small on, in small enough chunks that um, I can get more of this larger wood charred before I douse it. So it's a little damp, but so most of that smoke is actually steam coming off. But heat up quite quickly and and hopefully get a nice even flame over it to keep the oxygen away from the carbon. Okay, it's down to that one end of the stump that still hasn't burnt. So I'm going to go ahead and squelch it. Okay. 
Start that one in. And if you've got a really long trench, it, you can just squelch that part that's full that you're, you're done with and keep the other part burning. So if it's really long enough. Okay, this is the morning after, and this is what can happen. I had one little ember that I didn't get squashed. And in spite of all the water I put on it, it starts burning. And you can, that happens. It's easy. So I'm going to squelch it. So this is uh, the biochar I made last night. It's about uh, 12 inches deep in the trench. The trench was one and a half to two feet deep. Um, and it's sort of interesting seeing how the, the flame affected the, the dirt. It's been baked somewhat. But, um, so the trench is about five feet long and about a foot wide and a foot deep, so it's around 30, 35 gallons worth of biochar I made. I'll be digging in uh, the, uh, some compost into it and then uh, some of the dirt along the side mixing it in and then uh, cover it with a couple few inches of uh, topsoil. <laughs> 